Well, praise the Lord, everybody, and good evening. Good evening to each and everyone that have joined us thus far online. Welcome to the MSOG Online Revival. And once again, I'm here as your host. I am Bishop Marvin. And indeed, once again, it's a pleasure just to fellowship with the brothers in the sisters in the Lord. Amen? Well, saints, first of all, I would just invite you, if you can, please uh, like and share the video on the Mary Banks, or I would say the uh, Apostle Mike Daly. This is MSOG Online Revival. Uh, we want to get the word out, so we just invite you to take a time out and just share and like, amen, this video, amen, and help us spread the gospel. Also, it's good to have so many of you here tonight, and we just want to go into a brief word. But before we begin, I would just like to open up in a word of prayer. So join hearts with me as we go before the Father, that he would lead and guide us through this night. Amen. Father, we once again are truly grateful for where you have us, God, and how you've been teaching us, and how you've been expressing your heart and mind as it relates to your mandates, God, as it relates to having us as sons, Father, be obedient, be accountable, and how we apply your word to our heart, that we, Father, would be a demonstration of this word, God. We thank you, Father, that you have brought us from us so many different places that were dark in our lives, and now you have revealed the light to us. And now you're counting on us, God, to walk even more perfectly. So we thank you for your instructions, your directions. We thank you, Lord God, for your great love wherewith you have loved us. So, God, we were not deserving of it, but, Father, you continue, Lord, to strengthen us, to to, to, to motivate us in your most holy faith. And we just bless you for that. We want to exalt you, God. And we want you to have your perfect way in our lives that we would never, ever do anything, God, to bring shame to your gospel, but that we'll be a demonstration of what the gospel should be to all men. So we thank you for this time. We just ask for your anointing, and we just pray, God, that you would have your way with all of us, each and every one of us, even going through the airwaves, God, we pray. Father, that you would have your way. So we bless you and we give you thanks in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Once again, saints, I just would like to say good evening to all of you that are just tuning in. And we want to just share a brief word of encouragement tonight. Amen. And I would like to just share a word uh, from one of our writings called Accountability and Vulnerability. Amen? Accountability and Vulnerability. Now, we've been getting a word, saints, uh, about opposing, amen, or getting in the way of the message, the word that God has brought to us. And we have a knowledge, a recollection, and an understanding of what that word requires. And sometimes we can get in the way of what God is saying in order to bring others to the kingdom. And that is one thing that we don't want to do. We don't want to be, as we were ministering lately, rebels in the kingdom. Amen? So, what I want to address us with tonight, I want to share this word on accountability and vulnerability. Amen? Amen? accountability, an obligation, or willingness to accept responsibility or to account for one's action. Amen? Or to account for one's action. And when we think of the word obligation, it means that it's an act or course of action to which, which a person is morally or legally bound. Amen? A course of action to which a person is morally or legally bound. It becomes our duty or, or our commitment. And our commitment should be to the Lord. Amen? 
It should be to the law, which is the word of God, the law for our lives as sons. Amen. And then when once we have, have demonstrated our full commitment, our dedication, our obligation to the word that God is speaking, there is no way, there is no way in our hearts we would want to rebel against what God is saying or be rebels in his kingdom. Neither will we oppose or stand in the way of God's word as it relates to bringing someone else in the kingdom and even for our own lives. Sometimes we oppose the word in our own lives. But what would, what would, what would cause us now to dispel that, make sure that we are in total agreement with what God is saying, and we are walking, amen, in the precepts of the things that God has spoken, amen? Well, I want to first go to a scripture in Romans chapter 2, because if we, want, if, we, if we take this definition of accountability, which is an obligation or a willingness, we must be willing, and we must accept responsibility for our own actions. Sometimes, sometimes we take for granted that because we are sons of God, we don't have to be accountable to some people or we don't have to hold ourselves accountable or to a higher standard. Amen? And I want us to really look into that and make sure that, you know, we are holding ourselves accountable to the Word of God. We are holding ourselves accountable to God. Amen? Hallelujah. I want to look at Romans chapter 2, because first, if we're going to be accountable now, we must be accountable to the Word of God. Amen? To the Word of God, because the Word of God is the law for our lives. That is what we have to be accountable to, the law, whether it's natural, amen, or it has been revealed. The Word of God, we must be accountable to the Word of God, amen, before we can be accountable to anyone, amen. That's it for the sons. That's it for the sons. So let's look at this word in Romans chapter 2, and let's begin at the 12th verse, amen, Romans 2 and 12. Romans 2 and 12. We find now that, you know, no one wants to be accountable to anyone. Amen? Hallelujah. And we find that prevalent in the church. Amen? Now, this word says, For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. Amen? I want us to just look at this now. Hallelujah. For as many, mm -hmm. for as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law they shall be justified. The doers of the law shall be justified. Amen? Now, this scripture tells us about, explains that people are held accountable to, the, to, to, to God's word to whatever extent we understand it. Amen? If you, whatever, you, whatever you understand about God's word, you are held accountable to it. Amen? Because once God has spoken, God has revealed known truth to you, and however or how much have been revealed to you, you are held accountable. All who sin apart from the law will also perish. Amen? Apart from the law. If you sin and you don't know some of the law, because the Scripture tells us, all of us have sinned and come short of the glory. And everyone that sinned, the soul that sinned shall surely die. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Isn't that right? So all who sin apart from the law, hmm? and this was something we discussed 
uh, a few times, a few, I probably say weeks ago, that there is no one that will be excused from being judged by God's law. And there may be some that have, as of now, not heard the law or not heard the word of God. And this was talking about the, 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 the Gentiles at the time. But, but, the Jews, I'm sorry, but not because they are not exposed to the word of God, because everyone will say that, you know what, the gospel must preach in every nation, and everyone will hear the word of God, and that's how God is going to be justified. God is going to be justified because he has given us a conscience that we know right from wrong, amen, that we know good from evil. So all of us, whether you uh, 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 sin apart from the law, you will also perish apart from the law. And all who have sinned under the law will be judged by the law. In other words, hmm, the more you know, the greater your level of accountability. And why I want to say that is because in this ministry, we have the level of the word is so, so rich that we all are going to be held accountable for what we know. Amen? And this is what I'm saying. We must be held accountable to the word of God. Amen? In other words, the church, hallelujah, the church is an example that I want to put forth, an example of accountability. The church is accountable to God. We are the church, and we are accountable to God and whatever he speaks. Whatever he says, whatever comes in our hearing and our teaching. And over the years, we have been learning systematically how it is we sin, how it is we uh, uh, supersede uh, or go and, and just usurp authority over the Holy Ghost and how we do what we very well please. The things that we do and the word that we have been taught would teach us more perfectly. We are going to be held accountable. Amen? And I want to show now how it is or what, what it means to be accountable. What it means to be accountable and how we are to be accountable to others. Amen? We are to be held accountable to the word of God as the church. So now what does this accountability include? I want to share a scripture again. In John 5 and 19. And this is what Jesus said. Jesus said, Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do, for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Now let me read that again in your hearing. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, meaning the Father, these also doeth the Son likewise. Jesus is holding himself accountable. Amen? Accountable to what he has been taught or what he has seen the Father do or what he has heard the Father say. What instructions? Amen? He is holding himself accountable, and he is demonstrating accountability. And this is what we need to keep into consideration when we now are demonstrating to others the life of Christ. Just as children are to parents, amen? Children are supposed to be accountable to their parents, same as employee to their employers. But what does the accountability include? It includes, first of all, leading by example. Amen. The scripture tells us that we are first partakers. Those of us that have the Holy Ghost, we are first partakers of this, hallelujah, influence. Isn't that right? We are first partakers. And living by example means that we live a life accountable to God and one another in every aspect accountable to God and one another. This is the life of Christ now. Christ was accountable to those that he taught. He was accountable. He held himself accountable. Isn't that right? 
Isn't that right? He held himself accountable. For example, I, I am a married individual. So many of us are married, and so many of us have children. We are accountable to our spouses. We are accountable to our children. Amen? Because you know why? The life that we have been given, the life that we live, should be a demonstration. It should be one that trains those ones to become accountable and responsible sons. If we want our children to be saved, we must put forth a perfect example. If we want our spouse, if we, because, uh, come on somebody, if, if, if anyone's married and, and ever had a uh, riff in their relationship, amen, maybe there is some things that was said or things that were done that we were just not holding ourselves responsible for. Amen? The way our children turn out, maybe we just didn't hold ourselves responsible for their turning out, for their upbringing. Because the scripture tells us train a child in the way they ought to go. Amen? We need to be responsible sons of God now. We need to hold ourselves accountable to God. Hold ourselves accountable to the Word. Hold ourselves accountable to the law of God, which is the Word for our lives. Amen? I want to encourage us in that because as we were, 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 were ministering on rebels in the kingdom, there are so many, there is a fine line that will cause us to operate in the church as rebels. Amen? So we have to live a life that is accountable to God and to one another in every aspect. Especially if we have family, if we have family, if we have children, we have brothers and sisters in the church, amen, we must hold ourselves even accountable to them. This is where it begins. It begins at home, but it, 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 it goes over into the church among those whom we fellowship with, among those whom we claim to love. Amen. Hallelujah. The scripture tells us walk circumspectly, not as fools, if we want to demonstrate that we are filled with the wisdom of God. If we are walking according to the dictates and the precept of the word of God, hallelujah, we are to walk as wise men, circumspectly. Isn't that right? Circumspectly. And I want us to look at that. This is being an example, an example. First, in the accountability, we have to lead by example. We have to also trust. This is so hard and so, so, uh, so difficult for some in the body of Christ today to trust. Trust, first of all, where God has placed them. Trust the word. Trust each other. Trust their leaders. Trust, trust is a big thing. And that means inside of that, we have to keep Keep our word when we have given it to someone else. Our word must stand for something. Amen. Trust is another thing in accountability that we have to take consideration in. And we have to also look at honesty. There are so many dishonest saints today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are so many dishonest saints today. And this is so difficult Amen. For some people to actually look at as a characteristic that they sometimes display. Fairness and straightforwardness. That's all it calls for. Straightforwardness of conduct. Uprightness in character. Isn't that right? A refusal to lie. I've, I have found that, that people lie so easily. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to be in a world where now we are, we are encouraged now because of uh, our stance for holiness and our walk in the spirit and the fact that, you know what, I will hold myself accountable to God and I will not defile this temple. I will always, always uh, fulfill my commitment to the Lord. I will be dedicated to his purpose. I will demonstrate the life of Christ. We don't want to be considered rebels. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. That lesson is so, so right now in the church necessary for us so we can identify all the characteristics that will cause a hindrance to our walk and our growth and our, a hindrance to someone else looking at our lives and looking at our lives as a perfect example of what they ought to be. 
Amen? And I want to say that a perfect example. We shouldn't shy away from wanting to be a perfect example before the ones that we fellowship with. Amen? Especially as leaders. Because we understand that when the minister ministered, our ministers ministered on uh, becoming ones that, 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 that deter or become an opposition or get in the way of the message. As leaders, we don't want to be that when we minister. We don't want to be, even as ministers or even as sons of God, when we open our mouths to actually encourage someone or to introduce them to the Word of God, we want them to see us as what we minister in. We want them to see that it is possible even for them. We want them to feel the love of God drawing them and wanting them to actually have a life that is filled with love, joy, peace, righteousness. Amen? So our, our, our trust and our honesty, it's big in the body of Christ, a refusal to lie, a refusal to steal, and I'm not talking about going and, and, and stealing a, a few dollars, amen, or stealing like, no, we can steal in so many ways, amen, hallelujah, or deceive in any way. We can deceive people in any way, and these things need not to be named among us, amen, hallelujah, Hallelujah. We have, we have to also have, an, have a regard for others' calling, for people's calling. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. So when we talk about being hind, uh, uh, rebels, there are things that, 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 hinders, that hinders us to become accountable. Things that will cause us to become accountable, there are things that hinder that progress. Amen. For instance, lust for things and experiences of the world. Amen. There are some things that many of us may not have experienced and we always had it on our bucket list. We have a lust for things, a lust for whatever. Whether it's lust for ministry, lust for whatever. Lust. Lust that is, that is prohibited, that is forbidden by God. These are hindrances to us becoming accountable, accountable to God and accountable to the Word. Anything that takes precedent in our lives, these are things that be cause us to become, what I would say, a hindrance to the message. Or we get in the way of the message, and that is something that we don't want to do. Isn't that right? When we are, are, are not willing to become vulnerable. We're not willing to become vulnerable. Now, vulnerability, vulnerability is something, saints, that without vulnerability, we will never be able to accept the correction, the dictates that God has laid down, the instructions. Amen? We would never be able to accept it. We'd never be able to accept vulnerability because some of us have been vulnerable in some instances where we were to other churches and we, we had a bad experience had bad experience. Some people call it church hurt. Some people come to another church or some people end up in church and they are very guarded. We have, they are very guarded. They, they, they not are, they're not willing to open their lives. They open their hearts. And, and even the message now is being, it's being uh, judged by that, by that uh, lack of vulnerability. Will not be able to open up to the word of God. Amen? Amen? So now when someone is like that, amen, they, 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 they know now they have been vulnerable over here. And, and, and things didn't work out for me over there. And, 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 and it, they, they said all things, they did all things, and, and, and I'm, I'm hurt because of I'm me opening myself, and they, they did this to me, they said this to me, and, and now I'm, I'm not going to allow myself to be vulnerable anymore. Amen? I'm not, because no one's going to do that to me again. No one, I will make sure no one ever does what happened to me. I will make sure that that never happens again. So now I build this fortress, hallelujah, around me not becoming vulnerable, uh, vulnerable again, feeling that now we were once under authority. We were once under authority, but again, mm-mm, mm-mm, had no answer for so long. 
I, had, I, I, I will not, I will not become vulnerable and allow someone to hurt me again. I had to answer to everything that was said when I was there. And because of that, because I've opened up myself, because of that, I was hurt. Isn't that right? I was hurt. And you know something, Saint? When we, when we carry that baggage with us, these are some of the things what even opposes apostolic order. Once we have agreed that this is, this is it for me. But still, even inside of the doctrine that we're being taught on some of the things that we're hearing where we are in disagreement, Amen. Sometimes we demonstrate that we are rebels because we oppose not blatantly or not outwardly. We oppose apostolic order. We oppose the order that God has set and made mandate for our lives. We do it. Amen. These are some of the things. These hindrances are some of the things would manifest apostolic order. Amen. When we distrust. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've been like this now. Hallelujah. And I'm not going to trust anyone anymore. I'm not going to trust anyone anymore. Hmm? I'm able to trust myself. I can trust me. I can trust me not to hurt me. But I can't trust anyone. It doesn't matter what I'm hearing. I, 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 still, I still can't trust anyone. We have to become vulnerable, saints. We have to become vulnerable. We have to trust people. We have to trust the Word of God. We have to regard the God and people and trust God, amen, because ultimately anything that happens to us is because God allows it. So now vulnerability has to be in our characteristics. We must be vulnerable and hold ourselves accountable to what God is saying, however he is saying it, however he allows it to come our way, and whether it's to, it's, it's, it's going to hurt our feelings. Hallelujah. Sometimes we know the word can offend, but the word is what makes us strong. The word is what matures us. Amen. So now once we are hearing the word, we are hearing a good word. We are hearing not only a good word, we are hearing the word of life. The word of life now is what we need. We need to grow and we need to mature and we need to be vulnerable to this word that the word of God can cultivate, cultivate us, Take our hearts and mold it, mold it into what God wants to use to demonstrate his love, to demonstrate the peace that we should be demonstrating to others. Amen. A lack of love. A lack of love is another hindrance. Amen. It's a hindrance to us becoming accountable to God. Amen. And I'm not talking about a lack of love as giving it to the saints. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Or even receiving it. Now, there are some people who just don't love and, and are introverts. Hallelujah. Some people just don't love. Hallelujah. And believe that they love because they can say, I love. Amen. But there are some, one, there are some, some people that have never experienced love in the manner in which if it began with their natural father or parents. I know there are some, some, some people that I know have not experienced love from their fathers. Amen. And they grow into treating their children the same way. Never express true love. Amen. So because they don't know true love by the way they have experienced it naturally, when we come into the church, we can't readily accept real love, which is the Agape love, which is God's love. We can't accept it because we don't know the first, re, the first way or the first thing about love. We don't know how to love. We don't know how I should express myself to this one. And regard it. Amen. Because you know why? We don't see that becoming vulnerable will put us at perfect peace and causes us to experience real love. Real love is what we want to experience. Let me look at another scripture here so that we could, we could look at if whether or not we are allowing ourselves to be governed by the love of God or we're still guarded in a way that, you know what? I can't trust this one. I can't trust this move. I have to be in this church for at least three years before I can open myself up to people. Come on, somebody. I have to be careful. 
You know, one time I was, I was, I was join, when I was joining uh, this ministry, you know, some of my outsiders, my friends, said, now you got to be careful now because sometimes people only want what you got. They only want your money. Amen? But I, I was looking for God. My heart was in search of God, and whatever it takes, even if it took all of my money, all I wanted was God. And see, sometimes we can't be as guarded. If we want something, we have to take ourselves to a place where God said, if you seek me diligently, I will in no wise cast you out. We have to believe that word. Sometimes we believe our feelings. Sometimes we believe our experience and what we go through. Amen? But God is saying, loose all of that now. Trust me. Trust the word. Trust me. Let's look at Proverbs 3. Let's go there and let's read Proverbs 3. Amen? Proverbs 3. And let's begin at verse 3. Amen? And look at what it says here. It says, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shall thou find favor. Listen to this now. We'll find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Look at what the scripture say. God and man. Which, which means that now we, 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 will, we, will learn, we will know now that man, if we do what the word says, that no one is against us if they are being, hallelujah, instructed and governed by God. Hallelujah. Understanding in the sight of God and man. You shall find favor and good understanding. Amen. Man will favor you. Amen. God will favor you. Amen? God, God is the one who brings us understanding. Look at what it says. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Don't have no reserve. Don't hold back anything. Open ourselves up and become vulnerable to the Lord and the word of God. Look and see what God wants to do in our lives, in your life, in someone's life who is looking on your life. Look and see. And if we become vulnerable to that word, if we become vulnerable to the law, the law of God, the word of God for our lives, Come on now. Come on now. We shall find favor and good understanding. And not only that, we, we, we will learn not to lean to our own understanding because it's this what prevents us from being vulnerable and also accountable to God and the word. We are the church and the church is supposed to be accountable to God. Jesus said, I do those things I hear the Father say. Jesus stood up as an example to show us that you know what? I only do what I hear the Father do. I only do what I see him do. I only say what I hear him say. Isn't that right? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. And in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. He would not lead us to a place where we feel as if we're taken advantage of. Where we feel as if now this place is going to hurt me too. Or I am prepared protecting myself. I'm protecting myself from being hurt. I don't want to be hurt again. Hallelujah. And in most instances, it sometimes means that I don't want to suffer some things. And all it is that we have not come to an understanding yet that we must suffer some things. Suffer the fact that the characteristic that we display that we want to hold on to, the Lord is revealing that you know what? He wants us to be rid of those things that are unlike Christ. Amen? Be not wise in your own eyes. Sometimes we have the answer for ourselves. Hallelujah. And if we are in this state, saints, hallelujah, we are still right now getting in the way of the message. There are different ways we can get in the way of the message. We could think so highly of ourselves. And you know what? People will be seeing what we think of ourselves other than what we think of God and what we want to display that God is. Amen? So don't be wise in your own eyes. We must fear the Lord. Fear him and depart from evil. Amen? Fear the Lord and depart from evil. We must trust in the Lord, saints. Trust in the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. We must become doers of this word and not hearers. And that's, that's key in us, in us now, if I may say, 
That's key in us now, preventing hindrances of us becoming accountable to the word. Accountable to the word. Isn't that right? A lack of love is big in, the, in, 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 in some of the saints today. And we, we believe that when we talk about the lack of love, we, we don't actually uh, 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 always show love to people. Well, it could be a lack of love that you have never experienced. You might not have ever experienced and don't know how to dispense or to share or to love. But God is teaching us. All we have to do is open our heart. And this is what I'm saying about uh, now us not becoming accountable and, and vulnerable to the word. It sometimes goes against the very doctrine that we say is teaching us more perfectly. If we go against the order that God has set for us, then we're not holding ourselves accountable to that word. We would never do it. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Hallelujah. We have to challenge the way we think. Challenge the way we think, the way we speak, the way we look at things, the way we react. Amen. We had the lesson on reactionaries. Amen. We should not be reactionaries. I heard that word again outside of the ministry. Amen. And, and, and it, was, it was defining. It was defining so much in what the lesson taught. We can't just be ready, be ready to react at any impulse. Amen. We must be subjected to the word of God, the standards of Christ, and all ways, in every shape, form, or fashion, hold ourselves accountable to that word. Amen. Walk circumspectly. Amen. Walk with dignity. Amen. Hallelujah. Walk circumspectly. Hallelujah. We must challenge the way we think now. The way we think. It should be with the mind of Christ. Isn't that right? The way we think. Because if we want whatever we think to be God's word, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because we've been taught that our thoughts are holy. They are holy if we remain accountable to the word that brought us to the place we are. It is the word what created us where we are today. It's the word of God. It's not the way we thought of ourselves. It's not when we lean to our own understanding. It's when we are, are fully committed and when we are totally given over to the word of God. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? So we must not look at the way we even react at those around you. Come on, are we getting irate and, 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 and uncomfortable with certain people around us? Hallelujah. Are we doing that? Are we getting frustrated because some people are just not uh, where we are? Are we doing that? Hallelujah. God wants us now. Hallelujah. As it says in, in, in Galatians that uh, ye that are spiritual, consider such a one. Amen. Hallelujah. Lest ye yourself be what? Come on, somebody. We have to hold ourselves accountable to what the Word of God says and every part of the Word, not just the part that we want or not just the part that suits us, hallelujah, or is convenient to us. Isn't that right? We must look at and react. Come on, somebody. The things we look at and, we, and, and, and what we react to. Come on. I like the people around us or the situation we're in. Come on, are we reacting as if we are accountable to what the Word says that we should act in that moment or how we should demonstrate, hallelujah, the Word that we have learned and applied to our life? Are we demonstrating it in those instances now when we react the way we shouldn't act, when we become reactionaries instead of allowing the response that we give be given from the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Vulnerability now, it's a step toward deliverance. It's a step toward deliverance. So now, what are we saying? What are we saying? Hallelujah. Should we become vulnerable in everything? Should we be vulnerable? Yes. We had a saying one time, we must become the doormat for someone to get into the kingdom. Oh, Lord. Hmm? You know, we got to be open to, we must be open to everything that comes our way because we, once again, we only experience what God allows to come our way. Whatever comes our way, there is an 
a, a, a response that we have to give. The Holy Ghost is teaching us how to respond. And if we be accountable to the Word and what the Word says, what did God say? If we be accountable to that, hallelujah. First, we must be vulnerable to be accountable to the Word. Then now, we will get out of the way of the message. We won't be rebels. We won't allow anyone to see anything other than what God wants them to see. Christ. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Are we open to any insults, attack, or anything? Because, you know, I, I, I had a thing, and I, I kept looking at this in my life. I was always exposed, or somehow I always came upon uh, bad service. In the, in the civil sector, civil servants, uh, or, for instance, uh, fast food. It means to tell us that some of us start, need to stop eating fast food. But fast food, sometimes we always get an attitude that is displeasing. Amen? An answer. You know, I walk in a place, uh, uh, two, two, two ladies just sitting there, just talking to each other and laughing and, and, and very jovial. And, and the minute I ask a question, one turn and, and, and everything changed. The expression changed, the facial expression changed, and the tone changes. Does that offend you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on now. When we ask and order things in the fast food restaurant and 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 and. and it's wrong, or, or, or we get an attitude, or, well, is that all you want? You know, bad service tends to offend some people, and sometimes we have to wonder if these things really get us to a place where now our response is not that of the Holy Ghost. Are we holding ourselves accountable to what the Word dictates? Are we holding ourselves accountable to that? Are we, hallelujah, Sometime when no one is around, when it's only you and the fast food tender, hallelujah, are we getting in the way of the message for our own lives? Are we doing that and now changing the standard of the word simply because we have a right to respond back? And the way we respond is to how you respond to me. Isn't that right? Bad service sometimes tend to offend, hallelujah. But now we have to look at it now. Look at it. If we are accountable to that word, if that word is what governs us, if that word has penetrated our hearts, has washed us, has, has, has purified our hearts, if that word is, 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 is the law for my life, is that, if, if that word is the authority for me, is that word is the authority that governs me, that is my authority. If it is that, if it's that that governs me, you know what? You would never have a bad day because are we, are we reminiscing on the word? Are we doing what the word says? Think on these things. Think on the things that are lovely. Hallelujah. When someone says something to you and they are rude or obnoxious, are we thinking on the word? Are we thinking that, you know what? This is a soul. Hey, bless the Lord, sister. Hallelujah. Well, thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Maybe, maybe just saying that or just expressing the love of God might just change their attitude to the next person. Maybe now they would see that, oh, I have recognized that I was not as pleasant as I should be as a public servant. Wow. Yes, maybe next time, because of what I've said to someone, that changed their heart. That made them realize that I was not pleasant. Amen? Because now, it don't make no sense, or it don't make a difference, or it don't change anything, that if they're unpleasant, and we serve them with unpleasantry. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. And it tells us that, you know what? We need to examine Am I accountable to the word that I'm sitting under? Am I accountable to the word I minister? Am I accountable? Or have I made myself vulnerable to whatever comes my way? I would allow the Holy Ghost to absorb it. Let the Holy Ghost be that shield. Amen. Let Jesus be that shield. Amen. We want the shield and buckler, hallelujah, to battle. But we don't want the shield and buckler to pretend or, 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 or to, to keep something from coming our way. 
Amen. Something from, from leaving us, I'm saying. Some, some insult or some anything to cause us not to look like Christ. Hallelujah. And, we, and I'm not just talking look like him, but be him. Be Christ. We are to be Christ because our life hasn't just changed. Amen. We've learned that our life, hallelujah, is different. We have a new life. We don't have a changed life. Behold, if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. He's not just changed. He is a new, which means he was never seen before until he was in Christ. He was seen, hallelujah, in the world or something, but now that he's in Christ, he is brand new. So am I a new creature? I'm a new creature to who? Well, all things are of God. So if I respond, my response should be of God or godly. Isn't that right? So bad service. How many of us are experiencing bad service? How many of us are giving bad attitude? Are we accountable to the word? If we are accountable to the word, then we should be open to insults. We should be open, hallelujah, to attack. Hallelujah. Isn't that right? We should be open because we are here. Come on, somebody. Come on now. See, when we become vulnerable, we fight to tear down the walls of defense and allow love to flow. We have to allow love to flow. If love is not flowing, it must flow first from us. Is that right? It must flow first from me. Amen? Because there will be times when we experience negative experiences, when we have negative experiences, but we still are required. We don't never, ever, ever have a, 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 an occasion where we are excused by the Lord for having a bad day. Come on now, isn't that right? Jesus say, I always, not sometime, I always, if we just listen to the Father. And saints, I'm, I'm saying this because I've done this, and I've done this, and I always wonder, why do I always, why do I always experience, hmm? why do I always experience the bad attitude? Hallelujah. And you know, a few times I was with my wife, and she just spoke, she just demonstrated, and all she showed was pleasantry. Even me witnessing people being rude. Just show pleasantry, and it didn't hurt her. It didn't, and see, this is the thing we have to do. If we're not accountable to the word, we have to ask ourselves, why? Is it because certain things affect me? It affects me. Hallelujah. Because nothing affects God, nothing affects Jesus as long as we are in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Just as Jesus walked in the Spirit, nothing would affect me. So I look at that and I say, you know why? You know why I always, always experience the rude ones? It's because I need to hold myself accountable to the Word. And if we hold ourselves accountable to the Word of God, come on now which means that we will do nothing to offend the word. Isn't that right? We're still required, hallelujah, to respond the way God wants us or he told us to. We don't have the luxury of having a bad day. And all we have to do is be vulnerable to whatever situation we find ourselves in. And you know what? God will speak. God will speak. Come on, somebody. God will speak. We can't allow someone to dictate their, to, 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 to dictate how we respond, what actions we respond to. Is it the actions, hallelujah, of someone's rudeness, or is it the actions or the power of the Holy Ghost? Are we responsive to that? Or we just choose to be rebels at time when nobody's watching. <laughs> I don't want to say that. <laughs> Hallelujah. When nobody's watching, are we giving ourselves a pass that you know what? I have a right. Oh, oh. But isn't it that circumstances, situation, and relationship, isn't that what God allows to come our way to prove us being worthy, to prove whether or not, or to show us that we're not holding ourselves accountable to the standard that Jesus walked in? Hallelujah. Let's look at this last scripture, Matthew 5 and 10. Matthew 5 and 10. And let's see what it says in verse, uh, beginning at verse 10. Let's read it out to 12. And this is what it says. Blessed 
are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Hallelujah. Saints, everything we do all day long, every day, 24-7, is for righteousness' sake. Everything. If you chew gum, you're chewing it for righteousness' sake. <laughs> Amen? Everything, everyone we engage, we, we engage for righteousness' sake. When we meet someone, it is our responsibility to introduce them to Christ. Whether it's by word or revelation or whether it's by our demonstration of our lives. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Is the kingdom of heaven ours? Are we there or are we rebels in the kingdom? Oh, saints, these messages in the, in the World Conference was so riveting. It, it's, I'm sorry, the Founders Week. And we all heard that word. But let's just think about it now. It doesn't take much for us to be a rebel in the kingdom. It just takes plain old disobedience. It just takes plain old having my own way. It just takes plain old opposing known truth. And it just take now giving ourselves a pass and lessening the evil in the things that we do at times. Hallelujah. And I'm not just making this habitual because there are times we need to look and examine and just examine. Look and see whether or not we are becoming what the Word says. The Word isn't coming just because God wants to speak. God wants to perfect. God wants to shape and mold and bring us into the image of Christ so that when we see Him, hallelujah, and right now He wants to habitat with us. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. We don't want to be reactionaries. Hallelujah. We want to be responsive. And responsive means we want to respond to the Holy Ghost and his leading, his guiding. Amen. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you. And when they say it falsely, for my sake, Lord say you're blessed. You are blessed. Oh, I'm blessed when the Lord promised me the cattle on a thousand hills. See, we're blessed when we think we're getting things. And no matter if we get something from our hard-earned dollars, even though God allow it, we still equate everything that we obtain naturally with the blessings of God. And in no way, hallelujah, we have been promised all these natural things as blessings. We wouldn't consider suffering this insult right now. We wouldn't consider what the apostles say when Peter always come out of the prison. Hmm? Gladly will I suffer. Gladly I suffer. I thank God I suffer for Christ's sake. We wouldn't think that, you know, when we come up to a negative experience, that now this is a chance that I have that I miss last week. <laughs> This is a chance that I have to bring glory to my Father's name. That I would just tell this person, if and whenever someone get rude, bless you. Bless your kind heart. May the Lord have a, may the Lord bless you, sister. Amen. Come on now. All of this is for Christ's sake. What are we doing for Christ? For his sake. Are we putting him out on display the way he demonstrated to us the things that he went through? Are we putting him on display, hallelujah, that he, in the manner in which he wants to be seen? Or are we just saying, now, now Lord, let, let me at him. Let, let, me, let, me, let me for a brief moment deal with this situation. Are we doing that? And, and now we're just forgetting that we are accountable to the word of God. We are accountable. So in this case, don't try to put the Lord aside. Become vulnerable. Let them hurl insults. Let somebody say something. I, I, I truly sense, honestly, I had to examine this. I had to examine this. And, and, and you know what I came to discover? It ain't so bad when you allow someone to say something and you just let them, let them be instead of responding. Instead of becoming a reactionary, amen, instead of reacting, someone's 
Attitude or character shouldn't trigger a reaction from you that is unholy. Or me. Is that right? Is that right? Rejoice. Look at verse 12. Rejoice and be exceeding glad. Be exceeding glad. When they say all manner of evil against you. Hmm? When they persecute you. Be exceeding glad for great is your reward. What are we looking here for in the earth? What are we looking? We're looking for retribution. We're looking just to get even. Are we looking just to get even? Are we holding ourselves accountable so that we wouldn't even think retribution? We wouldn't even think responding negatively or getting back to someone. Isn't that right? Rejoice for great is your reward in heaven. Has nothing to do with here on earth. We are soldiers. We are sojourners. We are in this world, but we are not of it. Nothing in this world should affect someone that is of the kingdom of God. Isn't that right? For so, look at what they did. They persecuted, persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. Nothing new under the sun. Is that right? This is nothing new under the sun. Hallelujah. So when we look at someone who hurts you, look on them with pity. Isn't that right? See them as a soul. Remember, wrong thinking. Oh, Lord, that was a powerful lesson. Wrong thinking is the root of all sin. Isn't that right? Because once iniquity of us entered in our hearts, hallelujah, evil sets in. Evil, evil sets in. And this evil that we sometimes downplay because it's nothing where we curse someone out, hallelujah, to a son of God, it's still evil. Evil is evil, no matter how great it is. Hallelujah. Fornication ain't no greater than lying. Hallelujah. Getting angry and out of character ain't no greater than stealing. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Stealing ain't no greater than that, I should say. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. We're responsible for delivering ourselves out of the snare. Once we find ourselves in the snare, we are responsible to get ourselves out. Because we have been taught much. We have been taught much. And we are accountable to what we have been taught and what we heard. Amen. So we got iniquity inside of us. Hallelujah. You could be used of the devil anytime. Use of the devil anytime he wants you. Isn't that true? Hallelujah. And if, by the way, you offend someone, humble yourself, this is where vulnerability comes in, and go ask for forgiveness. Amen? Hallelujah. Saints, I just wanted to discuss that little topic on accountability. And first, we must be vulnerable. Amen? Amen. I find that meekness, which is power under control, is a good, 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 very, very good characteristic. Very good attribute to have. Amen? Because once we have gone, hallelujah, and we have settled down, that's why the scripture tells us be slow to speak and quick to hear. Hallelujah. We don't have to hear what they say, but let's hear what God is saying. And then let's take our time before we become reactionaries. Amen? So bless the Lord. This is all I wanted to share tonight. Amen? I hope that something that's been said, hallelujah, was a blessing to you. Amen? And before we go, saints, I would just like to encourage us all in giving, in giving tonight. Amen. We know what the ministry is currently engaged in right now. Our apostles, they are engaged in putting together uh, something. Hope it's something big again. Amen. I don't think nothing would ever get as big, hallelujah, as the Bible teacher up. But God is good to us. Amen. So I just want to encourage you. Let's continue to give in to Project 87. Let's continue to give in to what the apostles uh, have been mandated to or instructed to do as, 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 as we continue on in the Lord. Saying so many things are happening, so let's just, let's just be good to the Lord and what he's doing and support the ministry. Amen? Let's support the ministry. Amen? Our apostles are working feverishly right now. Amen? So let's help in any way we can. Whatever you can do tonight, Please, just give it tonight. Please, please. Let's even hold ourselves accountable to that. Hold ourselves accountable to our own work. Our own work. Because this is your work. This is your work. This is what God has given us to do in the earth. So we need, saints, we need to make sure that we affect souls. Amen? We affect souls. Amen? So look on your screen. Give a donation to marybanks.net forward, forward slash give. Or you can give by way of the cash app, dollar sign MB Global Church. Dollar sign MB Global Church. 
Amen. Give tonight. Give handsomely, saints. Truly, our apostle and the ministry needs it. Amen. And we just want to say here from Freeport in the Bahamas that we love you. Our prayers are with those of our brothers and sisters in Jamaica and, and, and anywhere else that have experienced, amen, the earthquake. Amen. Saints, shout out to our, our Jamaican family that we love them and we just know that God has a work for, for Jamaica and all of us. And I know he is protecting He's protecting those that are his own, amen, and whomever he pleases, amen. So I just bless the Lord for his guidance, his protection, and his love of the saints, amen. So I want you all to be encouraged tonight. My name is Marvin, all the way from Freeport, and I say thank God for you, and thank God for you joining me. Good night from Freeport, amen. We love you, amen. <laughs>